Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of ICAR training, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the ICAR examination. We're also going to look at how they will be solved. So let's start off with today's episode. Here's our first question. This one's from biology. There are two statements given. We need to find out the most appropriate option. So let's look at the two statements. Statement one says, all organisms from prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes can sense to environmental cues. Now, sensing the environmental cues is what is called as consciousness. So that, and since it's a defining trait for living organisms, that means statement one turns out to be correct. So consciousness is something that we consider as a defining characteristic because, uh, you know, non-living things do not express this. Living things can sense the environment around them. So statement one is true. Now if you look at our options, you can see that that eliminates options B and D. Because in both these options, it says that statement one is incorrect, which is not true. Statement one is a correct statement. Now let's look at statement two. Order and hi other higher taxonomic categories are not identified based on the aggregates of characters. It's the assemblage of genes which, which exhibits few similar characters. So the main idea that the statement says is that order and higher ca taxonomic categories are not identified based on character aggregates. Now this statement is in fact incorrect because order and other higher ta taxonomic categories have to be chosen based on aggregates of characters. The reason being there are less common characters as we move up the higher reaches of the taxonomic order, I mean taxonomic categories. So statement two is incorrect. Now that makes option C as the correct option because in option A it says both statements are correct, which is not true because statement two is in fact an incorrect statement while statement one is a correct statement. So the, the only option that describes both of them correctly is option C. Now let's look at another question. We need to find out the genes involved in turning on or off the transcription of a set of structural genes. So what do we call these kinds of genes? Operator genes, polymorphic genes, redundant genes, regulatory genes. So let's look at the definition for each of them. Option D, regulatory gene, is referring to a gene that controls expression of other genes. So that means option D is incorrect. Now let's look at option C, redundant genes. A redundant gene is defined as a group where multiple genes are required for the same function. So that means option C is also incorrect. What about option B? Polymorphic genes. Polymorphic genes are those genes where more than one allele of the same gene is exhibited in one person. So for example, in blood groups, you have cases where you get AB blood group. This is where both the A allele and the B allele are present together. So option B is also incorrect. The right answer is option A, operator genes. Now, when it comes to turning off alone, we use, there is a repressor gene, and for turning on, there is a separate inducer gene. However, both these, um, what do we call, both these genes act on the operating gene, operator gene, in order to turn it on or off. So therefore, the operator gene is important in 
turning or on or turning off the transcription of a set of structural genes. So option A is the right option. Now let's look at some questions of chemistry. Now we have two statements here. In light of the above statements, most appropriate answer should be chosen. The first statement says, fluorine oxidizes water to oxygen. If we look at the equation, F2 plus 2H2O gives you hydrogen fluoride and oxygen. So therefore, statement 1 turns out to be actually true. Now what about statement 2? Chlorine reacts with water to form hydrochloric acid. Now, for fluorine, it directly oxidizes water. However, for the other um, halogens, they form the hydrohalic and uh, hypochlorous, I mean hyp hypohalous acids. So, let's look at chlorine as an example. Now, this is the skeletal equation. Chlorine plus water gives you HCl plus HOCl. HCl is hydrochloric acid and HOCl is hypochlorous acid. So therefore, as you can see, statement 2 also is correct. So therefore, since both statements are correct here, option A is the right option. Now let's look at the final question for today. Which of the following options related to sulfuric acid is incorrect? Highly volatile, strong acid, high affinity for water, oxidizing agent. Now, sulfuric acid is H2SO4, and when concentrated H2SO4 is heated, it gives off nascent oxygen. Now this nascent oxygen is described as a strong oxidizing agent. So therefore, sulfuric acid being an oxidizing agent is true, which makes the option incorrect. We need to find out the incorrect option here. So it's not our right, it's not the answer that we're looking for. The answer we're looking for is the one that's incorrect with respect to sulfuric acid. Now what about option C, high affinity for water? We know that H2SO4 is also described as a dehydrating agent, which means that it absorbs the water. So that means that statement is all also true, so option C is also not the answer we're looking for. Option B, strong acid, this is a fair giveaway. Sulfuric acid is one of the few acids that are strong. Others include hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, oxalic acid, etc. So, uh, since it releases a lot of H plus ions, so that means um, option B is also a true statement, so it's not the answer we're looking for. Option A is the incorrect option with respect to sulfuric acid. Now, the fact of the matter is that sulfuric acid is in fact less volatile than other acids, such as hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. So therefore, option A, highly volatile, is incorrect. The term volatility ter refers to um, the melting point. So if you have um, a low melting point or a low boiling point, then the substance becomes highly volatile. So the, vo the term volatility refers to the boiling point. So if your boiling point is low, then you consider it to be highly volatile. So that concludes this episode of ICAR training. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.